Hi guys, I'm Nancy, and I'm going to show you how to do implicit differentiation. What is that? Well, up until now you've probably been doing explicit differentiation, which is just the normal kind of differentiation. Explicit differentiation is when you just have a normal y equals function y equals some x expression. So it's a function written explicitly in terms of x, and you probably already know how to take the derivative of something like this. You would just use the power rule, differentiate with respect to x, and your derivative, or dy dx, would just be 2x. But what if your function is not written as y equals some x expression? Well, then you have to use something called implicit differentiation. So if your function is not written as y equals, but is instead written implicitly as a function of x, something like x squared plus y squared equals another term or a number, 16, you can't do the normal explicit differentiation. You have to use implicit differentiation, which is basically just a special kind of the chain rule. So let me show you the steps, the main steps for implicit differentiation. OK, so these are the two main steps for implicit differentiation. It's really always just these two. The first step is to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So take the derivative in terms of x. But the difference is that if you differentiate a term that has y in it, you will need to attach a dy dx to the term, multiply the term by dy dx. For instance, say that you wanted to differentiate with respect to x a term, a y term, like 2y squared. First, you can just use the power rule to differentiate normally. The 2y squared would give you a derivative of 4y. But because this term has a y in it, you will need to tack on or multiply a dy dx at the end. Why do you do this? Well, the short answer is that it's a form of the chain rule because there's an outside function, the 2y squared that you use the power rule for, and the way I've always thought of this is that technically there's an inside function. This y contains some x expression. The y is made up of or composed of x's or some x expressions, so you will need to multiply by an inside derivative to take care of that inside expression. And the inside derivative is dy dx. So you can think of it that way. The second step is then to just solve for dy dx. That means get dy dx alone on one side so that your expression looks like dy dx equals something. Now there are some tricks algebra tricks that you may need to do this, and I'll show you those so that you can manipulate it to always get dy dx equals something as your solution. So let me show you how it works. OK, what if you have a function like this that doesn't start with y equals? It's written implicitly in terms of x. So it's a great candidate for implicit differentiation. In fact, you have to do it that way. The first thing is just differentiate both sides with respect to x. So for the first term, x squared, the derivative of that would just be 2x using the power rule. Move on to the second term, y squared. Now, remember I said to be on the lookout for terms with y? Well, in this case, since there's a y in this term, you will need to attach a dy dx to the derivative. So first, take the derivative using the power rule. Derivative of y squared is 2y. That's the derivative of the outside function. But because there's a y in this term, 
and y contain some x expression, potentially, you will need to attach or multiply this term by dy dx. This is the difference between implicit and explicit differentiation, the normal differentiation. Moving on, you do need to differentiate both sides of the equation, which may not be something you're used to. But if we look at the right-hand side, since we just have a constant, a number, 36, the derivative of that will be 0, as it always is for a constant. So we just write 0. All right, that was the first step. Differentiate both sides in terms of x. Remember, the second step is to then solve for dy dx. Get it alone. So if there are ever any parentheses you'd want to distribute or multiply out to get rid of them, there are none in this case. We just, we need to get the term that has dy dx alone on one side. You need to subtract out any terms that don't have dy dx. So we'll need to subtract the 2x from both sides. And we have 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. In order to get dy dx alone on the left-hand side, you'll need to divide out anything that you don't want there. Namely, we don't want 2y. So we'll divide both sides by 2y. Those cancel. And we are left with just dy dx on the left-hand side, which is what we wanted equals negative 2x over 2y, which can be simplified by dividing the 2s, as negative x over y. This can't be simplified any further. We have only dy dx alone on the left-hand side, so we're done. This is your answer for dy dx. Okay, what if you have a function like this one? It's a little more complicated. You'll need to use the product rule and the chain rule, but it starts the same way. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. The derivative of this first term, sine x, is just cosine x, as you probably know. There are no y's to worry about in that term, so we just write cosine x. We're going to subtract some derivative of this term, all right, this term, x squared y, has a y in it. So that should set off your y detector. <laughs> You'll need to multiply by dy dx at some point in this term. Since it is a product, x squared times y, you will need to use the product rule. People often forget this part. And the easiest thing to do is to use parentheses around what you get with the product rule. This will make your life easier and you will get all the right signs for your terms. So subtract open parentheses. Using the product rule for x squared y, we have the first function, first function x squared, times the derivative of the second. Derivative of y is 1, but because this is implicit differentiation, we multiply by dy dx, so it's 1 dy dx, just dy dx. Using the product rule, we add the derivative of the first function. Derivative of x squared is just 2x times the second function, y. We're not taking the derivative of y. So we don't need to tack on a dy dx. It was just the function itself, y. Close the parentheses. You're done with the product rule. Move on to the next term. So we're adding the der derivative of y is dy dx. And that equals the derivative of the right-hand side, derivative of 10x with respect to x is just 10. Okay, and you're done with the first step. All right, we move on to the second part of this problem, which is sometimes more involved. Finding dy dx 
and getting it alone on one side. So, if there are ever parentheses in your expression, first thing is to get rid of them. That means distribute the negative sign, expand inside the parentheses. So you have cosine x, you're going to distribute the negative, so you have minus x squared dy dx. The minus applies to the second term as well because of the parentheses. That's very important. People forget that. Minus 2xy. And we still have these other terms, dy dx plus dy dx equals 10. All right, no parentheses left. The next thing you want to do is only get it so that you only have dy dx terms on one side. This term you can keep on the left side, this term you can keep on the left side, but cosine x and negative 2xy don't have a dy dx in them, so you want to get rid of them, move them to the right hand side. That means subtracting them off or adding them so that they move to the other side. In this case, we subtract cosine x and we add 2xy to both sides. And that leaves us with Great, you only have dy dx terms on one side. In order to get dy dx alone, it needs to appear only one time on that side. There's a trick to make this happen. It's not immediately obvious, but the trick is to factor out the dy dx from both terms. I know you know how to factor. See, the value in that was that now you only have dy dx appearing one time in this whole equation, and it will make it very easy to get it alone because this negative x squared plus 1 that you don't want on the left-hand side, you can just divide out like you did in the last one. And your final answer is dy dx alone on one side. equals 10 minus cosine x plus 2xy all over negative x squared plus 1. That looks like a mess, but that is exactly correct. You have x's, you have y's, so this is your answer for the implicit differentiation dy dx. Great, so now let me just warn you about a few things that tend to trip people up sometimes so that you can watch out for them. One is that people forget to use the product rule sometimes. This looks really innocent. You might think that you could just write 2xy or treat y like a constant. No, you have to use the product rule like here. And yes, it makes it messier, but you will get the right answer. Another thing that trips people up, they forget to factor if the dy dx appears more than once toward the end. And then one other thing that might confuse you is sometimes dy dx is instead written as y prime. It's the same exact thing, just different notation. I hope this video helped you figure out implicit differentiation because I just did a bunch of calculus and it's not my job. But if it did help you, please click like or subscribe.